We'll go to our program now. celebrated 34 years of marriage and they have two children. Their daughter Amanda is 25 and she teaches first grade. Their son Taylor is 24. He's my hero. He's a minor league pitcher in the Boston Red Sox system. I'll fill in a few blanks. <laughs> He's worked uh, various assignments in the San Diego Police Department, including patrol, investigations, training, and administration. His last assignment was as captain of investigations. He's got a lot of hobbies. Humboldt County is perfect for that. Outdoor recreation, going to sporting events, and watching movies. And he says he is humbled and honored to be your chief of police. I look forward to serving the Arcadia community. Please welcome him. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I apologize, uh, first of all, for being late. Um, I got the times mixed up a little bit, uh, and I mean this sincerely. If there's a way that I can make it up, I and mean, if you want to assign me a service project, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> force it, yeah. yeah, true, but uh, I, I uh, got this party ticket. Yeah. <laughs> That's two snorts. I know. <laughs> I know, I went to the bank and you made like five. I know, I know. You better up your game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a few open seats. Mm -hmm. Seats join. Yeah. <laughs> um, before I consider that, um, um, I, I wanted to acknowledge uh, uh, Chief Randy Mendoza, also our former city manager, who's here. And Woo! Crystal, who was our juvenile diversion counselor and is now working for the county. Any any other former any other former Arcata PD or our current? If I'm not seeing you, 125 years this year. Um, dedicated service since 1894 is what you'll see on the side of our cards. And everybody, every law enforcement agency has a slogan, and uh, you know that that's a that's a slogan that really believes in family and history. And there's a tremendous amount of pride within the walls of Arcata PD for the service that they provide to all of you and this great community. So um, it's an honor to be here with you this morning. Um, as Karen was saying, uh, let's see, he was born, in, born and raised on Long Island uh, in New York. Moved out to San Diego in 1983. Met my wife, Jackie. We got married, and 34 years later, here we are. Jackie's a, a nurse. She's, uh, she got her bachelor's and her master's at San Diego State University. She's currently a school nurse. And then uh, my daughter Amanda is a teacher. And then Taylor actually just got released by the Boston Red Sox on January 11th. Uh, but his agent got him signed by the River City Rascals in Missouri. So he, he's now a rascal. It's independent ball. He got up to high A. Um, you know, it's a, it's a grind. He was drafted in 2017 out of a Division II school in San Diego uh, as a pitcher. Um, but thrill of a lifetime, a dream come true. We're so proud of him. Uh, and just a, a picture, a very small uh, snapshot into what it's like, and most likely perhaps in your industry uh, as well. As you don't just elevate to these positions, you don't just come into these positions of leadership. Uh, you gotta work. You gotta roll up your sleeves, you gotta you know, um, work hard, treat people well, and set goals and then really lean on those who have gone before you and hopefully uh, they will um, invest their time, their energy, their talent into you. And I can tell you, 
um, in all sincerity that the reason why I'm standing here is because of the, for the last 31 plus years, everyone who has put their time, talent, and invested their blood, sweat, and tears into me. And I can't speak for the chief, but I'm sure he would agree that, especially in the public safety arena, you don't, you don't have a choice but to work together as a team. Um, there are no set hours. Um, we, we come when you call. Uh, and we were out early this morning uh, because the community needed us and we were out there with a lot of resources and, and a very good uh, resolution. So um, what can you expect from me as your chief? Uh, you can expect a lot of things. Uh, first of all, I don't have all the answers. Uh, so I'm going to really be looking to, to you uh, to help me uh, guide our police department and figure out what's best for, for this great community in terms of public safety. What are your expectations of the police department? At being a new chief coming in, um, I do get asked quite a bit from, from the officers and our professional staff is, hey chief, what do you want? How do you need this done? And they're not used to being asked, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you figure out how to do it and then tell me what the resources are that you need uh, to get the job done. So it's not always going to be that way. Um, but there is a tremendous sense of family uh, and, and honor within Arcata Police Department because of all those who've come before me for the last 125 years. And Molly, it's, it's good to see you uh, this morning as well. So I have something for you. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't have all the answers, but you can expect a lot of hard work. Um, I'm a blue collar, old school, now I'm old school. You know, at 55 years old, uh, I'm old school. Um, uh, that's not a bad thing, but you know I'm flexible too, and, and I understand what people in different generations need, and I think I have the, uh, the uh, I guess, wisdom now uh, to, to help get them what they want in the, in the manner in which they want it, package it up their way. But you're going to get me accessibility. Uh, I'm going to leave my, I've got some of my city business cards, and I have, quite frankly, because I, I, uh, I forgot to load up early this morning. I've got some throwdown cards as well, uh, but they have my cell phone number and my email address. Why do I do that? Because I want you, if you need something, I want you to call me. Oftentimes, you know, it's difficult to maneuver through the public safety phone tree, and oftentimes you only get to the front counter. The front counter staff do a phenomenal job, but you may walk away with some of your question answered, but you don't really understand and, or have that much clarity. Just give me a call. Oh, um, anytime. I, I love Arcata. Arcata has a grip on me. Um, and as the, as the former chief and city manager knows, that I serve at the pleasure of the city manager. Um, so, you know, uh, the expectations are high, uh, not only from, from uh, Karen, but from all of you. If I do my job, uh, this will be my last law enforcement job. Um, th this community has been f phenomenal. It, they've embraced me and my family. Uh, been so friendly. I mean, when I do my community walks, people actually answer the door. That's sort of unusual sometimes. Um, uh, and then, you know, just uh, the, the, the tremendous amount of pride that's here in Arcata. Uh, I'm just glad to be a part of all of you and, and your wonderful community. So, um, and then you'll get, you know, uh, ingenuity, uh, innovation, and empowerment. So, there certainly police work. We've got a lot of. Um, a lot of old tricks that work well, um, but some of them have died on the vine. Um, and it's no longer acceptable if you call me or you call our dispatch and we say, well, we'll do extra patrol. I love hearing that, extra patrol. You know, we'll do the best we can. Uh, for example, we've got some problems at the ITF and at the community center with homelessness. Um, and uh, so I find myself telling the staff who work there, we'll do extra patrol, right? And they're, they're great. They are very gracious. Oh, we appreciate that. Thanks very much. We may do some extra patrol. What's extra? We, do we go by there one time? Do we go by there two more times, three more times? By two or three days later, boom, we're off to the next priority, right? And there's priorities all over this city. It's a great city. It's a safe city. But for everyone stabbing, people want to know, why is there a rise in violent crime? Well, it's my job to make sure that violent crime goes down. And it's your job, quite frankly, to hold me accountable. I don't want you to tell us what we're doing well. I want you to tell me what we're not doing well. That's the only way we're going to get better. Um, so, and that's the message to my staff is let's create a plan for these places. We, we're not going to solve the homeless problem, right? But we can be innovative and empowerment is I'm giving you the authority to make decisions. 
on how to manage your day in a police car, in dispatch, writing parking citations, as a citizen volunteer, you get to decide because there's a lot of ways to solve problems. And what we're trying to do is up our corporate game a little bit, our marketing game. You're, I, you might be seeing us on social media a lot more. We're trying to do more, uh, you know, allowing people inside the PD, whether it's through social media or having an event that we did inside Arcata PD back on December 8th. We're going to celebrate our 125th anniversary this year. We're going to do a family day for, for the Arcata Police Department family. We're going to do more open houses. We're getting ready to kick off our town councils, which is different from the community walk. Um, I truly believe, and, and I've been brought up in the community policing and the problem-solving philosophy. It's, it's woven through my body. It's in my DNA. I can't get rid of it. Whether the cops like it or not, it's here. You've got to embrace it. It's not about us. Okay? We're the public servants. You don't exist on our behalf. It's, it's the opposite. And sometimes in this business, we lose sight of that. Why? It's a tough job. It's very challenging. <clears throat> but I guarantee you that whether it's a dispatcher or a volunteer or Crystal doing juvenile diversion or a police officer out on the beat, at the end of every day you can look in the mirror and say you made a difference. Um, now, you may not be able to point to one person or one call. And in the moment, during, as you're in the minutia and trying to figure out if you did a good job or you're questioning maybe your tactics, trust me. If you're in the law enforcement, public safety arena, everyone you come in contact with, you've impacted them to some degree. So, and what we want people in Arcata to walk away from is, we may not have been able to solve your problem in the way that you wanted it solved, but you understand why. And we treated you like a human being. And we continue to want to have a relationship uh, with you. And what I tell my cops is, look, you may not be, these are very complex problems. Think about it. We got 21 to 55 and up rolling out to a place where, you know, the reason why we go is it's bad news, right? We never get called to a, a you know, a celebration except for today, um, right? So we're asking 25, 35-year-old people to solve a problem that the people who called us are unable to solve. So what I tell the cops is, look, don't put so much pressure on yourself. First of all, you got to be safe, right? Um, and you got to be you got to be human. Uh, we got to the uniform's important. The equipment is important. It's there for a reason, right? But people want to know you as a human being, not as a police officer. And at the end of the day, the only thing we might be able to leave them with is hope. Okay? But if we get called back, we'll try to do and provide a little bit more service. And you're going to see me out in the community um, quite a bit. And I'm trying to put as much as I can out on social media without getting ridiculous. But I think it really is important to tell our story. And social media is a, a mechanism in which we can do that. So um, I know I have 20 minutes, including Q&A. I was late. I don't want to be like too long-winded. Um, and I truly mean it. If I can make it up to you as a group, whether it's, you know, washing your car while you're away or dog sitting, <laughs> something. I, 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 I'm not going anywhere. You're, you're stuck with me. So, so yeah, let me, whatever you need, whatever you need, let me know. There, I'm, I'm right down there. <laughs> We're going to two schools this morning. We're going to Arcata Elementary School and then Sunny Bray Middle. Um, we, uh, we, we ask students every year. Eileen Verbeck, our police business manager, asks students every year from local schools to design our holiday card. So the two students who were selected this year, we're going to go honor them. And then Greg Pope, who's our juvenile diversion officer. Both Greg and I coach a sixth grade basketball team in the Arcata Rec League. Um, so, you know, being here with all of you and honoring and acknowledging and thanking you for your service um, is one more opportunity for me to get um, involved in the community, to immerse myself in the community. Um, and so if there's anything you need, either on a personal note professionally, a, a problem that you need the police to help with, cell phone, email, you have direct access to your chief of police, that's probably the most important thing <clears throat> for me. Questions? Yes? Great question. Why, why did I come to Arcata? I was looking for an opportunity to continue to serve. Um, and I was looking for an opportunity to maybe do it in a little bit of a different environment. Having worked for 31 years in San Diego, which is a you know, model police department, uh, very progressive, 
what we've learned from a lot of other police departments, trust me, we borrow um, um, a lot of things. But, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a great run. But from, a, I guess, a, a, um, a career and personal gratification position at 55 years old, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this for the rest of my life. Can I still continue to serve and maybe do it in a different capacity to up my game, to develop my skill level, and see if, if I can make an impact in another community? And here we are in Arcata. Um, and uh, what a dream come true for me. Yes? Can you talk a little bit about the camping ordinance in town? Yeah, great question. I can't talk a lot about it because I don't even understand it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I understand the ordinance, but I don't really know what we can do with it right now, except we're, we're really very, very cautious about it, um, and we're very sensitive. And I'm proud of the city for that. You know, the, uh, the Ninth Circuit has spoken, the Supreme Court has spoken, courts all over the country have spoken. You have to decriminalize homelessness. It's not against the law to be homeless. That's the most difficult part for people, because visually, it's uncomfortable. Let's just acknowledge it. Right? The person may not have ever been arrested before in their life. They may not have any mental illness. They may not be strung out on drugs or alcohol. Many of them are, right? But some may not be. We're seeing an, a rise in homelessness among 70 plus year old people just due to financial problems and amongst the youth. It's amazing to me how many HSU students are struggling with either finding or keeping the housing that they have. So um, as far as camping goes, Slippery slope for us now. The Boise decision is the most recent one. It's not codified yet. Boise is appealing it. But in essence, and this goes back to 2009 and 2007. That's how long these cases take to work through the courts. But the, if you read the decision, everything's online. It's great. You know, they say you can't, you can't criminalize homelessness. Uh, just because somebody doesn't have a roof over their head doesn't mean that you as a police officer can arrest them, right? But then right at the end, they say, we're not trying to direct any municipalities on how to police the homeless. <laughs> so, and guess what? Now, uh, and look, I know a lot of the homeless. I know them by first name. We give them food, right? Now, somebody may say, well, why are you doing that? You're enabling them. Because it's the human thing to do for me. That's what I do, okay? I'm not ashamed of it. Um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and New Year's Eve, um, what else am I going to do? Maybe I can make their next 20 minutes a little bit more bearable by giving them a package of crackers. It's better than just driving by and I, don't, I can't do anything else for you. But uh, many of them now, when, when I say hello or say, hey, can you maybe start moving out of the community center maybe at 6 a.m. because the staff's starting to come. And like at ITF, staff are coming, right? And you wouldn't believe what some of the things they have to walk through to get to work. I'm not going to tell you because you have food in front of you, right? But it's, the, it's sort of the byproduct of being homeless. Um, so we have to be really careful because even the homeless now, when we get out of the car, even to say hello, they're saying, hey, uh, uh, my Eighth Amendment right, uh, homelessness is not a crime. They're not throwing out their attorney name, but they are educated now. Um, maybe in some cases more educated than the chief of police. Now that's not going to deter us if we have if we're, if we're within procedure and within the law, then we'll utilize enforcement appropriately. But homelessness has to be much more than just enforcement. There are a ton of resources available here, right here in Arcata. I'm so proud of this city. You've done a phenomenal job over the decades of taking care of everyone to the best that you can. So our goal is to continue to push them towards services, divert them away from the criminal justice system, and hopefully impact one at a time. Any other questions? Yes, sir. We've been seeing a number of movies lately that actually are sympathetic to the homeless. And they, they point out the following. Tell me if this is actually accurate. It's not illegal to be homeless, but it is illegal to camp on public lands. Is that? Well, that's the essence of the Boise decision. Public lands, city lands. And it's open to the public. So. You know, people will say, um, let's, let's just say, you know, the plaza, for example, um, or the community center, or the forest, right? Hey, they're camping, um, and, and so, so what's camping? You know, they, maybe they have a sleeping bag out. Maybe they have some food set up. Maybe they have, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, some, some camping equipment. 
So what if a family goes into the plaza and they set up the same thing at 12 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday? I gotta go over there and I gotta tell them, hey, there's no camp. So we have to be fair and judicious and provide equitable levels of service. Because um, when you have advocates, whether it's homelessness, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's name the right that people have, and we should have these rights and we are entitled to them. There's advocates out there watching law enforcement to ensure that <coughs> You know, when we're enforcing the letter of the law, we're doing it appropriately, but I'm sure as the chief would, would, would agree, oftentimes it's more about the spirit of the law. But we have to balance that with the impact in the community. And striking, and hitting, what are they saying, baseball hitting that sweet spot? That's, that's the goal. We don't get there a lot, we get close, but that sweet spot, we're, I think we'll always be Looking for that, I think this is my cue to. <laughs> How did you catch? I actually, we have a few more minutes because we have to do a couple of things. So one, thank you for being our speaker. Oh, we'll the donation in your name, the Wheelchair Foundation. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you. That's the first one. Yeah. The second one, which is probably more important. I heard you're a selfie guy. Love selfies. Yeah. You still well, yeah. well, now the question is, is how do we get us all in a big cluster so yeah. we can get a selfie with all of us? Yeah. Yeah. I, I need that selfie stick, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So maybe I'll turn that tripod. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, that's teeny. Well, I tell you, well, my arm, you know, Michael Jordan in Space Jam, you know when he made that last bucket, his arm was like 30 feet long? Maybe we, can, can we can work on something. So how about we'll do this? We'll wrap up the meeting and then we'll cluster everybody into the back. Do it. Sound good? Yeah. Sound good? Perfect. Okay.